guys, my name is Ben Nowak, and today I present to you the second episode of a trick tip series brought to you by Riptide Sports. And in this episode today we're going to be learning how to do 180 degree heel side stand up slides. Alright guys, much like my trick tip video on the Coleman slide, there are three very important things that we're going to have to think about constantly as we're trying to learn these slides. And that is the following. Foot placement is going to be very important. Also, along with foot placement, is going to be weight distribution. What that means is your weight um, horizontally on the board and your weight um, like vertically, like how your feet, how much weight's going on top of each foot and how much weight's going either side of the board. It's all going to make a big difference in your success and how you execute the stand up slide. And the last thing is your shoulders because your shoulders are so important in how you rotate and a lot of people forget that but we won't let you forget that today and we're gonna get you doing stand-up slides no problem so let's start out and talk about foot placement a little more all right so the first thing that we need to cover really quick is foot placement I ride goofy so we're going this way you can see the boards direction and everything so uh, you'll have to mimic this for whichever riding uh, style you have, whether it's regular or goofy. So, the first thing that's going to be really important is that the only reason we're very careful about our foot placement in a slide like this is because we need to get proper leverage over the board when we're sliding. So what that means is that if we're sliding this way doing a heel side slide, my heel has to be pushing against the rail. Both of my feet do. Both of my heels need to be pushing against the rail just enough so that I slide. Not that I hook up on the front and get pitched off and that I don't have so much back here that I slide off backwards and I lose my board in front of me. So we have to have a good balance of foot placement. And I'm gonna show you how I do my foot placement because it works for me. So the front foot is first. So you can see I've got a little toe stop here. That's not necessary, obviously, but I just like to have it because I can kind of feel it with my pinky toe thing. And it just kind of helps me know where my feet are. So you can see that I don't have much of my heel hanging off here. I would consider this part the meaty part of my shoe, the part that I used to kick out the back, but I don't have the meaty part back here. I just have really my heel back off. And what that's going to allow me to do is kick out of the back, but still have more control over the front of the board. So if I want to do just a stand up slide without a 180, I can use all my foot over the front of this board to pull it back. Um, and you guys will see this as I'm demonstrating for you. And the back foot, I like to put it over the trucks back here because this board allows for that and it's really nice to get maximum leverage over these back wheels. I will actually put the media part of my shoe, as I oops, just described, on this back part right here. And what that allows me to do is just get a ton of leverage over the back. So I can do a stand up really fast if I need to, I can do a little 180 really slow if I just need to stop in like a little urban situation I guess. And so this is what it looks like all together. My toes aren't really hanging off on either side. Um, I've got more of my heel hanging off back here than I do in the front. And as I said, that's just me. You can do this different ways, but this is the way I'm planning on teaching you how to do it. And it allows me to carve into my slide, kick out the back, and still have a lot of control with my front foot to bring the nose wherever I want the nose. So with that being said, I think you guys have a basic idea of the foot placement, so we're going to go ahead and do weight distribution. Alright, so now that we know where to put our feet, it's time to figure out how to actually initiate a 180 stand-up slide, heel side stand-up slide. So this is going to take into account our weight distribution, as I mentioned in the last little bit where I was talking about your foot placement. So let's have a little scenario where we want to do a stand-up slide. We're going downhill this way, we're in our stance that feels comfortable to us, and I'm thinking to myself, alright, I just want to do a little 180 where I pivot. I don't really want to hold it out so long, I don't want to scrub off so much speed, I'm not going too fast, I just need to do a little one. That's okay. So what I'm going to do here is think, okay, I'm pivoting over these trucks. So what I want to do is I want to load more weight on this foot because I don't want these wheels to slide as much. So if you think about when you pivot, 
you guys play basketball or anything, you keep all your weight over this foot if you want to pivot on this foot. Because if your weight's back here, there's no way to pivot very well. And it's the same thing on a skateboard. You want to keep your weight over the wheels that you don't want to slide. So, what I'm going to do, and I haven't talked about shoulders much yet, that's going to be the next little bit, but you're going to want to start off, get your feet in the right spot, just as we talked about, and start carving into your turn, carving into your slide, because that's going to help you break traction. So, let's say that we're carving into it. Okay, now I want to kick the board out. Now we're sideways, and like I said, I haven't explained the shoulders part of it yet, which is really important. So now that we're sideways, we want to think about what kind of slide we want to do. If we want to hold out a really long stand-up slide where all four wheels are sliding, I want to partition my weight so that it's over the center of the board. I don't want to have too much weight on either foot. If I keep all my weight on the front, I'm going to continue to do that little pivot slide that I was talking about in the beginning. And if I do want to do a pivot slide, that's fine. I just keep my weight over the front. But if I do want to hold it out for a while, I want to put more weight on the back so that I can get these wheels sliding out, these wheels sliding, and now I'm drifting with all four wheels scrubbing a lot of speed, which is good. So that's pretty much weight distribution. It's going to be annoying and a little bit frustrating to figure out how to manipulate your weight distribution between both your feet during a slide, but it's really important. And it does kind of come naturally and it does kind of make sense. You just want to make sure that your weight distribution allows your wheels to slide. So if you want your front wheels, your back wheels, or all your wheels to slide, you just have to modify your weight a little bit. So now, to help you with actually completing the slide, we're gonna go ahead and talk about shoulder movement. All right, so the last part, which is really important that we have to work on is shoulder movement. This way, I'm all set up, I'm carving into my turn, and I kick out like this, and I haven't done anything with my shoulders. Nothing's going to happen other than me possibly eating it, which we don't want. So, we have to think about what we want to do with our shoulders. And if you watch my Coleman tutorial video, I mentioned that shoulders, what you move with your shoulders, translates into how your hips move, and it translates into how the board moves, which is just a really key concept you want to understand when you're doing any kind of slide. So, there's a couple things I'm going to want to do to help initiate this slide, and I'm hoping this is going to be a really important part of the video because a lot of you guys will go out there and you're just going to have trouble kicking it out, which can be really frustrating. So, we're going downhill. I'm setting up for my slide. I've got my feet in the right position. There's a couple things I need to start thinking about. I've got my weight a little bit more on my front foot, regardless of what kind of slide I want to end up doing. Having a little bit more weight on the front is going to help me initiate the slide. I'm going to compress, and when I'm ready to slide, I'm going to decompress. Now what that's going to do is take a little bit of weight off of all of my feet to allow the wheels to break traction with the ground a little bit easier, which is going to be really helpful in allowing you to slide and also it's going to look a lot better. That's a really stylish thing to do is to get down and pop up when you're doing a stand-up slide and sink down after you're finished. Also with that, you're going to want to make sure you carve. So we're going to carve, sink, open up and kick. Now, shoulders. You're going to want to open up your shoulders just like you do for a 180 Coleman. If I'm getting down here I'm compressing, I'm carving, and then it, all at one time, this is going to be the hardest part probably, all at one time I'm thinking about decompressing, opening my shoulders to face downhill, my hips turn, I'm kicking out with my back foot, and all of a sudden I'm sideways, which is what we want. And at this point your shoulders can do a couple different things. I'm making a separate trick tip video for doing just a stand up slide, not a 180, and for that you're going to want to close your shoulders again because then the board's going to come back, hips are going to come back, feet are going to come back, and you're not going to be in a switch stance. But for this one, we're going to go ahead and open our shoulders all the way as we continue to slide. And at this point, I'm still decompressed. I haven't sank back down yet. But now that I am 180 degrees and I'm ready for my wheels to hook up, I'm going to sink back down, which is going to put weight on my wheels and cause them to hook up again, and I can ride away looking all steezy and whatnot and in control. 
So that's really good. So again, shoulders is really important. One thing you can do is you can use your hand to reach out and what that's going to do is just open your shoulders for you. So you can get down, reach out with this hand as we're spinning and that just constantly opens my shoulders and points them in the direction that I want to be going as I'm spinning. So that can be really useful. Also, you want to think about turning your head and turning your head is not something that you want to keep doing as you keep progressing because I think it looks kind of silly just to keep turning your head in the direction you're going so you don't want to end up looking backwards after your slide but it can help you turn your shoulders and all these little tips to help you turn your shoulders are really going to help just because of how important your shoulders are to doing this slide so we have all three things kind of locked down and we're going to go ahead and try to do some all right i'm ready to do a stand-up slide I forgot something very important there, and that was that I didn't lean back very much. Now this is going to be news that you guys don't want to hear, but leaning back is also going to be very important. The only way you're going to be able to learn how to lean back is to lean back too much and to fall. That might happen once, or might happen like five times, but you're not going to learn how far back you're able to lean without falling unless you fall. So if you're having trouble getting pitched off the front when you're trying to do a stand-up slide, chances are your weight's just not in the place it needs to be. You have too much forward on your toes so that the, your front wheels hook up and you just come flying off the top or you've got all your weight over the back and you're kind of like leaning really far forward because you don't want to fall off onto your ass. That can happen too. So it's going to be kind of like a perfect harmony between having the correct foot placement and leaning back. And the best way I can think to describe leaning back is that you kind of want to sit back a little bit, but you want to keep your body upright. And what that's going to do is allow you to keep your balance in your torso and your shoulders and everything. And if your butt is hanging farther back, it's going to allow you to have more force pushing on the board this way. So you're going to be able to just keep your balance and you're not going to go flying off the front of the board if you're looking like this, because all your weight's going to be in the back and you're going to be sliding. So I'm going to try it again. Thank you.